Father, we just thank you that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. That you're still parting the Red Sea. You're still getting in the fiery furnace. You're still taking two fishes and five loaves and multiply. You're still stepping into the tomb of Lazarus and calling out. You're still healing blinded eyes. You're still restoring. You're still delivering. You're still making a way. You're still redeeming. You're still saving. You're still raising up. We thank you here today, God. We need you just to be God here today. Have your way. Speak to the hearts of your people. Let your word go forth with power and clarity today. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. That was a great amen. You could be seated in the presence of the Lord. How many believe he really is still a way maker? Amen. Man, it's so good to see you in the house of the Lord today. We're so glad that you're here. If this is your first time here, we welcome you. And uh, we know a big step. You took a big step to come here today. And we're just so thankful. And we're praying and believing that this is not the last time you're going to be here. But you're going to get planted here and just make it your house and your home. And we're so thankful. You should have got a connection card if this is your first time here. Fill that out and you'll just get a, a gift at the end of service. But man, we're so appreciative of you being here and just everybody being here today. We're just so thankful that you're here and just excited for what God is doing in this house and in this place. Amen. 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 How many of you are ready just to dive into the word today? All right. Hey, let's just dive into it. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited with everything that's happening. I'm excited for everything that's going on, that uh, the enemy might be roaring, but the church is roaring louder than ever before. That... The people of God are just just jumping in and just saying, let God be God and every man a liar, amen, and just let the Lord reign. I feel like, man, I, I wish we knew that was an old school, the Lord reign. I could, I, could, I could skip a pew in a single bound. We start singing that here today, amen, the Lord reigns. Um, so I, I want to... I'm, I'll throw it out there. I want to give a, the title of my message. Just start it off quick and fast as the, as the kids are bumping and grooving downstairs. As you can hear, if you hear that, just you ought to rejoice. You ought to rejoice that we got kids that just the next generation of just impact folks that are just going and just believing. Man, I'm just so appreciative. If I have, if I have my, if, if I have some teenagers here, if I have some young adults here, if you would, just stand to your feet. If you're a teenager or a young adult here, just stand to your feet. Hey, let's just love on them. This is the next, this is the next church. This is, this is the church. This is impact here. I love it. Come on, you can do better than that. This is the church right here. Love it. Man, we just, we love you. We just honor you. We just thank you so much that just impact is your home and you guys get involved and you can be seated. They get involved. We did a, uh, a next step with them, which we're doing next step uh, tonight. And uh, man, they've just gotten plugged in and gotten involved and run and did some things and got some things. Some of the kids did a, a TikTok video and it's not tic-tac-toe, but TikTok, it's social media. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, man, just God is, we got kids that are playing and just involved. So man, we appreciate, we appreciate, we appreciate. I love it that we got the kids bumping downstairs learning about Jesus because you can hear them down there. It's like, I mean, they're getting it. They're getting it. I mean, they're just going. And then we got, we got young adults and teenagers in here. And then we got folks that are here from every tribe, from every nation, from every tongue, from different backgrounds that come for one common purpose, to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen? Amen. But the title of my message today is Open the Window. Open the window. And let's just go ahead and pray. Let's just go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you today. We love you today. God, I thank you that what you're doing at Impact Church I pray that you'd bless those kids downstairs. I pray that they would feel your presence and feel your power and your glory. Father, I pray that as people walk through these doors, that they would just feel welcome, no matter what age, no matter where they come from, no matter what side of the tracks they grew up on, Lord, that they would feel your presence in this house. That we just love people, and I know you love people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So uh, you read throughout, uh, uh, especially in the Old Testament when you're just reading throughout, you'll, you'll see that there's a lot of fights and a lot of battles going on in the Old Testament. And the majority of that, most of the time, they're fighting over territory. Somebody shout territory. Yeah, they're fighting over territory. And the enemy works the same way. Let me, let, let, me, let me explain a little bit when we're talking about territory. The enemy will fight you over territory. The enemy will fight you over territory. The enemy will fight you over territory. We see in the Gospels there, and I've referenced this scripture a lot, is a man named Legion, right? A man named Legion. And Jesus tells the disciples to get in the boat, and I want you to cross over to the other side. They're heading to Legion. But in the midst of heading over to Legion, it says that a great windstorm arose. Now, this just wasn't your just ordinary windstorm. I call it a spirit on assignment. Why would the enemy... Oh, I thought I heard Brit Brittany's here today. Come on, let's go. I thought I heard her name. Did you bring the, did you bring the little crumb snatcher? Oh, sorry, just a squirrel moment. Listen. And so as they're heading over to Leeds in a great windstorm, which I call a spirit on assignment, why? Because the enemy knew that he was going to lose territory. Jesus comes to him and says, what's your name? To the man full of demons. He says, my name is Legion, for we are many. Does not begin to argue with him, hey, don't send us out of this man. But the demons begin to argue with him, don't send us out of the territory. Don't send us out of the region. They were more concerned about territory than they were the man who was cutting himself. Are you, are you with me here today? And so the spirit that the enemy knew that he was going to lose ground or territory. Okay, let, let's go. Let, 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 me, let me go. Jabez, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. You've got to read it when you get home. I didn't put it on the screen, but you can read it. But it's just, a, it's just a small prayer there by Jabez. And Jabez is talking about that God will bless him. But he says a phrase there, God, enlarge my territory. Somebody shout, God, enlarge my territory. He's not talking about enlarge his territory. He's not talking about, Lord, give me, give me 30 acres in Bloomingdale. Lord, I'd like to have a, an extra 50 acres, you know, over on some prime real estate. He's not saying enlarge my territory. He's not saying, you know, give me more problems. But what he's talking about, that, that territory, what we're talking about, and it goes back with legion because the, the spirits, the, the, the demons were like, don't send us out of the region. Don't send us out. What's, what's that territory? That territory uh, means influence. Me, Jabez, when he says enlarge my territory, he's saying give me greater influence. Give me greater opportunity. Give me, let, let me have a greater impact. He's not saying enlarge my territory. He's not saying I want to be known. He's, he's not saying, I, 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 I want everybody to see, look at the new car, or look at the new things I got. He's not talking about enlarge my territory in that way. He's like, enlarge my territory. I don't want to be known, but I want to make you known. Does that make sense? Because, because the demons uh, with Legion were like, don't send us out of the territory because we have great influence here. We, got, we, have great, we have great influence. We, we influence what happens in this region. We have influence what takes place. We, 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 we provide great opportunity. And Jabez is like, no, enlarge my territory. I want to make you known. I don't want to be known. I want to make you known. I want to, I want to Lord, open, open doors, enlarge my territory that I can tell more people about you. Enlarge my territory that I can tell people that what he's done in my life. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. 
he touched my mind. And he said, if you know the song, and he saved me just in time. But Jabez is back here, and really, it's not wrestling with God. It, he's not wrestling with God when he's saying, enlarge my territory and that you would bless me. But he's, he's come to a point where I've been here. I don't know if you've been here. But he's saying, I was born for more than what I'm experiencing right now. You have a plan for me. You have a purpose for me. You, you have the plans that you have for me are to prosper me and not to harm me. I want to step into my purpose. I want to step into that plan. I haven't been stepping into that plan. Something's been holding me back. Something's been in my way. Something's been keeping me from stepping into all that you have for me. And that thing that's holding us back is what the enemy will do just like he did with the disciples crossing over to Legion, a great windstorm arose, the enemy will put up a mountain to block your view in anything beyond it. So often the enemy will put up a mountain to block your view in anything beyond it. So often the enemy will put up a mountain to block your view in anything beyond it. So often the enemy will put up a mountain to block your view in anything beyond it. Jabez says, enlarge my territory. I, I have more. There's, there's more. I know. I want to impact, folks. I, I want to do more for your kingdom. I'm here to tell you that you were born for such a time as this. You were not born to live the nine to five and be miserable and complain about bills and complain about life and be miserable that your car is a piece of junk and everything and you hate life. No, you're more than that. He put more in you, but what has happened is that you have so many mountains in front of you that the enemy doesn't want you to see your purpose. The enemy doesn't want you to see that you have value. The enemy doesn't want you to see that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Am I preaching all right up in here? The enemy wants to block your view that you can't see that he does want to bless you. He does want to make you the head and not the tail. But all you see is being the tail. You got to pick up the crap jobs. You got to, people are going on vacation. You can't go on vacation. So you got to pick up all their, hey, can you pick up my stuff again? Yeah, I'll pick up your stuff again. You're like the, the butt of all jokes. Because when you have got a mountain in front of you, you can't see your future. The mountain will make sure that you see it and not your purpose and not your destiny. Amen. Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. But the mountains wants to make sure that you're looking at the mountains and not looking to the king. When you have a mountain in front of you, you can't see tomorrow. When you have a mountain in front of you, you think that your life is not worth living. When you have a mountain in front of you, you can't see yourself beyond the mountain because the mountain blocks your view. There's a thing that's rolling with, amongst all the pastors now, and a lot of these people are just lightning rod preachers. You're not preachers. You're a lightning rod preacher. You do, you say stuff to get likes and comments and stuff. I, I learned, I'm learning this. I'm old, but, but I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. We, 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 I was doing a, uh, uh, talking with uh, uh, Dave, drummer Dave, David, talking with drummer David, and, and I had made mention, he was working in advertisement, and I had made mention something about YouTube, and, and David said something to me. I was like, you know what, that is, that is, but David said, you know what, sometimes it's best that you get negativity on social media because that attracts more people. So some of these preachers just say stuff because they want people to, because they'll share it. Like, I don't share your foolishness. But they have this preacher out now, and I don't even, I, don't look it up. Don't even give a, a like, don't even, not you would like it, but don't even give them a YouTube view. But this cat come out and he was like, oh, the word doesn't work for today. Yeah, that it was written so many thousand, that worked for them back then, but it doesn't work for today. 
I'm like, the devil is a liar. Like, you must not read your word if you don't realize that, that the word still works. That is amazing that he's omniscient. He's om omnipotent. <laughs> that he peeked into the future. Oh, you don't hear me. I could go back and start talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they didn't even talk about the one who come birth forth of Mary, but King Nebuchadnezzar looked and said, I see four men and the one looks like the son of God. You don't even know that he could step out of it. But he, he knew that you would run into mountains in your life. And he says in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, and I'm going to give you that scripture here today. But Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you that if you had the faith as of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Somebody shall move. Yeah. It's the smallest of all seeds, the mustard seed. I mean, it's, I, I couldn't even bring one up to do a sermon illustration. Because it's so, so you'd be like, here it is. You'd be like, where? I mean, right, right. You can't, it's the smallest of seeds. But the Bible talks about growing in him. That we are to go from glory to glory to glory to glory. Right? That we are to grow in him. Think about that. A mustard seed is, is the smallest seed. But once that thing, it's limitless in what it can do. It can, it can end up producing fields upon fields upon fields upon fields. But a mountain has no growth potential, but the potential of a mustard seed is limitless. Nobody drives by some of our mountains and said, hey, did you see that mountain on Route 2? It looked like it's grown a little bit. Is that my eyes just playing with me or is that thing kind of going up on, you know, Highland Hills a little higher now? It has no growth potential. But you, he's talking about the seed down inside of him. He was like, okay, let me put it this way. He says, if you allow me to live large in your life, if you allow, the scripture says it, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. God, he's saying, if you, if you just have a little bit, if you just allow me to begin to grow, what's going to happen in your life, what I'm going to do in your life is limitless. I mean, you're going to go where I, you can never imagine. The things I'm going to do in your household, the things I'm going to do in your family, the things I'm going to do, if you just have... I, I, I put it this way. We have, we're doing next steps uh, tonight. And one of the things that we talk about is, one of the things that next step we talk about, Miss Judy will tell you, is give it a year. It's a terminology we use, give it a year. Just give it a year. Because some people don't give church a year. They'll just come in, I, I, mean, I didn't like the lights, I didn't like that, I didn't, oh, he was kind of too loud, you know. And we say give it a year. Why give it a year? Give it time. And let God begin to arise in your life. Hello? See, see, you don't have to have a mountain of faith for a mountain of problems. You just got to allow God to arise in your life. You just got to allow him to be the king of glory in your life. Amen? Amen. We see it here. This has been my scripture, and I'm just going to throw you in on, on my scripture. But in Acts chapter 5, has been my scripture for the last couple weeks. Acts chapter 5, verse 38 and 39, and they're talking about the disciples, and it says, and they're all like, we got to stop them, we got to stop them, we got to stop them, and one guy comes up, and this is what he says, wait, well, hold on, therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go, for if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fall, but if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourself fighting against God. 
He said, if their origin and they're playing around, it'll fall by the wayside. But if God is in them, you can't stop them. I'm here to tell you that if God is in you, you can't be stopped. I don't care what mountain you're looking at. I don't care what mountain you're facing. I don't care what mountain has been thrown your way. I don't care what mountain in your finances, in your marriage, with your kids, with your health. I don't care what the lawyer said, what the doctor said. I don't care what your neighbor said. I don't care what the attorney said. I'm here to tell you that you are unstoppable you are unstoppable you are that'd be a good I'm going to go ahead and use it I'll put my quarter in the meter but if you would stand to your feet find three people around you high five them and tell them you're unstoppable you're unstoppable yeah you're unstoppable and if they don't stand up high five them in the forehead and just let them know you can be unstoppable sitting down I'm unstoppable I'm unstoppable I'm unstoppable. Why? Because he's down in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If God be for me, then who can be against me? No eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor has it entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared. Oh, the enemy may come in like a flood, but the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard down on the inside of me. That means keep going to connect groups. Keep coming to church. Claw your way here. If the car breaks down, then get on a bicycle and get here. I mean, do what you got. I mean, you could be like, I was driving the Robinson a couple of weeks ago. And a, a guy in like a clown outfit was riding a unicycle. Big old tire. Big old tire with little, two, right on 20, like, that's like the auto bond. Right there by the airport exit. I'm like, did I just see what I just, I almost wrecked. I'm like. And he's. I said, you know what, the church has got to get like that. Because that guy says, I don't care how I get there, I'm going to get there. I don't care how you got to get there. If somebody comes in with a big old unicycle next week, you just got to get here. Let God begin to arise down inside of you. Let him grow down on the inside of you. What's standing in your life? What's blocking your view that, that you can't see around? What mountain? Jesus is standing at the bottom of the mountain. He comes down from the mountain and he tells them. And he uses, he said, man, you, you shall be able to speak unto this mountain to move. And it will move. Somebody shout move. Yeah. Come on, somebody shout move. Yeah. I love it. I don't know who came up with this. I, I didn't, but I don't know who came up with this little quote here. But I love, I love using it. It's that quote. It says, don't tell God how big your problems are, but tell your problems how big your God is. Amen. I don't know who got it, but I'm going to coin the phrase here today. And I say, I say that. I say that because this, this next point is important. Because if you're not... If you're not careful, the mountain will take your voice. That was a scream that you are not taking my voice. If you're not careful, the mountain will take your voice. And then you'll just stand there and... He said, what are you doing? That's just how some of you are doing worship. <laughs> because if you're not careful, it will take your voice. And then you're just, just, you just stand there and look at it. And I know I got you, so I'll throw myself in there. 
or you, you'll get depressed about it. I've been there. Anybody? You see that mountain, it's just like, you're just discouraged about it. And there's some that are here that are looking at major mountains. And I know how the enemy works. You can get suicidal about it. You can. You can get suicidal about it. Because the enemy will just start messing. You look at that mountain, the mountain that's in front of your family, and you're just like, man. And you're doing everything you can, and you're trying to go, and you're trying to work, and you're trying to fix, and you're going here, and it just seems like it just, when you take one step forward, you take 40 steps back. Anybody know what I'm talking about there? And it's just like, you're like, man, I just, like, you know, and then you're, you're, you're cutting the grass, and you know, and you, you know, and you're like, can't a brother just catch a break up in here? And, you're, and, and the enemy just starts, it just seems like you just can't, because you can't see around it. Or for some, your mountain's so big that you just end up laying in bed and eating bonbons and watching I Love Lucy reruns and you haven't brushed your teeth in three days and curlers all up in your hair and your hair's a hot mess and somebody tried to FaceTime you and you tell them, oh, I'm busy right now. you busy because you look crazy. But this morning, but this morning, we, we've got to open our mouth and speak to stuff. I said this morning, we've got to open our mouth and speak to stuff. Jesus said it himself. He says, you've got to speak. He knows that it, it could take your voice. He says, you've got to continue to speak. Somebody shout move. Somebody shout move. Depression's got to. Fear has got to. Worry's got to. Financial troubles got to, anxiety's got to, doubts got to, shame's got to, sickness got to, troubles got to, haters got to, Leviathan's got to, Python's got to, Absalom's got to. I wish I had somebody to just push your neighbor beside you and tell them, if you ain't moving, I, something's got to move in here. Something has got to move. He says, speak to it that it moves. In the book of Daniel, are you all familiar? Maybe you, maybe you referenced the story about Daniel and the lions then. Daniel or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is in the book of Daniel. And so Daniel, do I have a few moments? So, so Daniel, Daniel, God begins to enlarge his territory with King Darius. Begins to enlarge his territory. And King Darius says, man, I really like this guy, Daniel. And begins to give him territory. Begins to give him influence, begins to give him opportunities, begins to give him regions. And he, hey, I want you to reign over here, and I want you to reign over here. And all, I, I, I want you to take care of this. Oh, Daniel, you're, you're amazing, and, and I want to do that. And any time when we talked about it, that when Jesus was heading over to Legion, what did I talk about? Spirits on assignment. And last week I talked about how the enemy will use people. And all of a sudden, here comes the spirit on assignment. And the spirit on assignment got all amongst the little haters that were around Daniel. And all the little Leviathans, you had to be here last week. They come running over and they say, King Darius, King Darius. And he's like, yes. And they said, hey, we got an idea. And they're like, King Darius is like, what's that? He says, let's put a memo out. Let's put an edict out. Let's put an email out. That for the next 30 days... That if people don't worship you, let's throw them in the lion's den. King Darius is like, yeah, that's a pretty cool idea. Put my stuff out there, my image. and Well, I never even thought, that was a great idea. This is a great board meeting. Let's do this thing. And they're like, yes, put it out there. And so they send the, the memo out, and they send everything out. And, and, of course, Daniel is in great power and authority, Daniel gets the, his phone dings. Ding. Daniel looks down and he's, oh, got an email from King Darius. Oh, it's, a, it's an important memo. It says important. So Daniel starts scrolling. For the next 30 days, all those in the land must bow and work. And Daniel's like, hmm. 
They shall serve no other God, but they shall worship me. For the next 30 days, Daniel's like, interesting. Daniel doesn't respond back. Daniel doesn't forward it to anybody else. Daniel doesn't even go to King Darius and say, hey, what's going on here? What's, what's this all about? Daniel said, I'm going to continue to do what I do. Because Daniel served the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Daniel understood Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's why it's in there. Daniel understands that they can turn the fire up time, seven times hotter, but the king will still walk in the fire with you. Daniel understood that he parted the Red Sea. Daniel understood that he provided a ram on the mountain for Abraham. Daniel understood for when he battled with Jacob and he blessed Jacob. Daniel understood how God... He says, he don't say a word. He don't go to anybody and say, hey, can you believe this memo that came out? Can you believe what's happened up here? What's going on? Daniel doesn't say a thing. This is hilarious. This is what Daniel does. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. It says, when Daniel knew the king had written his name on this law, he went into his house, went to his upper room, he opened the window towards Jerusalem. He got down on his knees and he began to pray and begin to give thanks to God like he's done every time before. Here, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Look at this. Daniel could have easily, privately went into his room Kept the door, sh or kept the window shut. Could have kneeled down next to his bed and prayed quietly. Oh God, be with me today. But Daniel understood the assignment. Daniel understood, and he thought, "Hmm, all right." Daniel goes over, opens the wind, open. I'll come over this side. You seem a little rowdy over here. They, they. He opens the window. He opens the window and he starts praying. And he starts declaring, and he starts believing, and he starts thanking God, and he starts magnifying God, knowing, knowing that if he, what he's doing can get him in the lion's den, knowing it gets him in the lion's den, but he knows that, okay, okay, all right, Daniel had great influence, Daniel had enlarged territory, but Daniel had a mountain in front of him. But Daniel had a decision. Do I bow to the mountain or do I speak to the mountain? And Daniel says, I'm going to speak to the mountain. And Daniel opens the window and he starts praising God and he starts glorifying God and he starts magnifying God. He could have done it privately. He could have done it quietly. But I'm here to tell you that we serve a God that does not want us to be quiet about our faith. We serve a God. That, the problem is, is that many Christians nowadays have been closing the window and going to the side and praying and say, oh God, be with us but that's not the God we serve that's not the God we serve our God I wish I I, w I wish you'd give me 30 seconds to preach this mug up in there because I could preach it because Jesus could have went off to the side and went on the cross but it said that they made a public spectacle of him hanging him on the cross we serve a God that he went on the cross publicly he wants your faith He wants your faith to be public. He wants your faith to be public. He wants you to open the window. He goes over and opens the window, and I can just imagine he wasn't quiet. He's as loud as he could be. Imagine if this was today going back to the going back to that preacher that said the word is not for today. I'm like, oh, it just so is, dude. Because you're that one 
You're that, you're, you're that guy that would have walked by. You're the preacher that would have walked by Daniel's window when he was praying. You would have been the preacher or the priest that walked by Daniel's window when he's praying. And he would have reached in. Now, Daniel, God would not have been pleased with your disobedience to King Darius. If I was today, you would hear people, settle down, you're making us uncomfortable, Daniel. Daniel, I can't believe you're so loud in your praise. It kind of offends me. The enemy in the world would say, and all the little haters that got Daniel in trouble, close your window, Daniel. Keep your faith to yourself, Daniel. Daniel, keep, 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 no, Daniel, keep quiet, Daniel. It doesn't take all that much to praise God. Close, clo clo close the window. I, I, I don't know why you have, I don't know why people get a little rowdy on, on praise and worship at Impact. You need, Impact needs to close their window a little bit. You need to close their window. Oh, no, the kids need to close their, need to close their window. But I, I'm here to tell you in the title of my message, it's time for the church to open the window. It's time the church to open the window. Somebody shout, open the window. Somebody shout, open the window. Somebody shout, open the window. Listen, those who are moved by mountains would have closed the window. But mountain movers open windows. Mountain movers open window. I wish I had a beat. I wish I had a rock. I wish I had somebody because I'm doing a little bounce up in here. Oh, mountain movers open windows. Mountain. I got a little song up in here. I, David, give me a beat. David, help a brother. David, where you at? Run, David. Run as fast as you can, David. David? Dave, I'm calling you. He's, he, look right here, his hearing. I need a beat. A beat. I need a beat. I need a beat. I need a beat. I don't know what beat, but I need a beat. And so our mountain movers open windows. Mountain movers open windows. Mountain movers open windows. Oh, come on. Mountain movers open windows. Mountain movers open windows. Mountain movers open windows. Look at your neighbor and say, are you a mountain mover? Are you a mountain mover? Listen, I say this. It's time for the body of Christ to open the window. Open the window when it comes to our faith. Open the window when it comes to our praise. Open the window when it comes to our convictions. Open the window when it comes to the word of God. Open the window when it comes to prayer. Open the window when it comes to righteousness. Open the window when it comes to holiness. Open the window unashamed, unhindered. And saying, listen, what he's done for me, I cannot be quiet. I don't know. I once was blind, but now I see. That's all I know. I might not know scripture like pastor, but I know he's done something in my heart, in my life. And I got to open the window and I got to tell the world about it. I got to tell the world about it. I got to tell the world about it. I believe one of the things that we got to do, and I'm finishing up here. I believe one of the things that we have to do is that we have to open the window when it comes to our message. 
I've, I've learned that, and we just know this through Scripture, that when God saves you, turns you around, He doesn't do it that you keep it to yourself. Jesus would go and he would heal people, right? Go show yourself to the priest. Go show yourself over here. Go show yourself that we are to take what he's done in our lives and open the window. Not, not everybody's going to crawl through that window. Sometimes you'll get mocked, laughed at. Sometimes people will walk away from you. But you open the window. The Bible very, says it very clearly. That if you're ashamed of me in front of man, I will be ashamed of you in front of the Father. That's word. Don't yell at me. But if you confess me before man, I'll confess you before the Father. We want to give you an opportunity to open a window. Can we pull that screen? Do we have, do we have that? So in here is just an opportunity for you to open a window to somebody. And what we have, it's so easy. It's a copy and paste. It says, invite your family, invite your friends and family to join you for a mountain moving Sunday, which is next Sunday. I mean, it's been every Sunday, but next Sunday. And this is on the app. It's on the website. It's going to be on Facebook. I think it's all on there now. I think they pulled it up. And down here at the front, because sometimes we're like, I, I don't know what to say. I, I'm not sure what to do. We did it for you. You, you, copy, you copy and paste. That's all you're called to do is just you copy and paste and you send it. What they do with it is what they do with it. But down at the bottom, it just says, hey, friend, Sunday is better together. I want to invite you to Mountain Moving Sunday at Impact Church this week. I'd love to have you join me. Check out our website at Impact 3. You go there, you copy, you paste it, you put it on, uh, and send it out the text message. You send it out to a whole group. It's, 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 that, it's, that, it's that simple. We're giving you an opportunity to open the window. This coming week, this Wednesday, we're having a praise and worship night at the Weirton campus. Right? Having a praise and, praise and worship team is going to be there. Why? We're opening the window. What did Daniel? Daniel opened the window and he started praising God. Right? Started praising God. Also, it's going to be a day of fasting. He said, well, I have no idea what you're talking about fasting. All the information, right? All the information of fasting is going to be on the app and website. And we're talking about because we're, it's mountain moving. The disciples went and they were casting out devils. And devils were going and things were happening. And they came to Jesus and said, whoa, man, we ran into a mountain. We ran into some stuff, and Jesus said, oh, I want to let you know, these only come out by prayer and fasting. And that's why we're having it. We're believing for some mountains to be moved in your life. Also, next Sunday, we're having a baptism. Open the window. Open the window. What's the baptism? It's just an outward expression of what's going on in my life. The death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you're unashamed and unhindered, it's like, well, I can't get up in front of all those people and, and get in that tub. It might be cold. I baptized John's wife, and it was zero below 30. You too that day? Oh, man, it was cold, dude. Was it? Oh, I love it. It was, it was so cold. The water was cold. Outside was cold. It was brutal. But it's opening a window. Sign up next Sunday. Sign up. So I'm ready to open a window in my life. Maybe you've been kind of like a little secretive about your faith. Maybe people, people, don't, people don't know about it. Do your close friends know that you go to church? Do those close to you be like, hey, if, if, if I would roll up, if I'd roll up on you, I kind of did it this week. Otis here? Otis. I've known Otis. Otis and I grew up, grew up together, and he was around a bunch of people at a ball game. And I rolled up. I said, oh, this is the preacher test. Let's see how the friends respond. And we started talking, and one was like, why are you talking to your preacher? Like, I was like, inside, I was like, come on, Otis. Yes. I mean, he wasn't talking bad to me, but we were going back. And it made my day, Otis. I was like, I was like a little kid, just a proud papa. It's normally sometimes like, oh, you go to church? <laughs> you, did you call him your preacher? You know? 
And so this is, and then the last one, I'm, I'm out of your hair right here. Opening the window today by saying I'm not ashamed. And we're going to do that through communion. That we're saying I still believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If the ushers with communion will come forward and they're going to begin to serve you and the worship team's going to sing and just give me a moment and we're going to serve communion together as a family. If you've gotten your cup already, you can go ahead and take out the bread morsel. So just hold on to it for a second. Just hold on to it while we're, as the ushers are making their way through. We want to make sure we do this as a, as a family. So what are we doing? We're opening the window. The world doesn't understand it. The world may seem like it's foolishness, but we're opening the window. We're proclaiming the Lord's death till he comes. That's what, this is what it's about. It's in word. That as you partake of this, you're proclaiming, you're opening the window today. And you say, I believe that he died and he rose again, but I believe he's coming back again. I'm opening the window and declare it. You might find, you might end up blocking me. You might end up friending, unfriending me. You might get rid of my text messages, but I'm going to open the window and I'm going to just let them know he's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 says this, for this is what the Lord himself said about his table. For I pass it on to you before that on the night that when Judas betrayed him, the Lord took the bread and when he had given thanks to God for it. Take a minute, just lift it up, just give him thanks. That's all you gotta do is say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for, thank you that your body was beaten for me. Thank you. Thank you that even when I'm not faithful, you remain faithful. Even when I mess up so bad, God, you still love me. You still love me. You don't turn your back on me, but you continually thank you for forgiving me. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. And then he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take it. You can grab the cup. Careful. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying this cup is the new agreement between God and you that has been established and set in motion by my blood. We'll lift it for a second. Let's just thank him. Father, we thank you for your blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Your scripture says, I once was far off, but I've been brought near by the blood of the lamb. Revelation says that they overcame the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. We thank you. You can partake. And it finishes with this, for every time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you are retelling the message of the Lord's death and that he has died for you. Do this until he comes again. You're opening the window and you're saying he's coming again. 
Let's worship the Lord. talked about inviting a friend next week. Why wouldn't you want your friends to experience this? Why wouldn't you want them to know Savior and that he died for them? Why wouldn't you want them to know forgiveness? 
why wouldn't you want them to know that there's somebody that loves them beyond belief? God, help us. Help us bring to mind those people that need that text this week. Because they need to be here. This is where the answer is. The answer is found in Jesus Christ alone. Not out in the world, not at the bar, not at school, not at Kroger. It's not found there. It's found in a place, a church like this. So God, help us this week. Think of those people that we need to send that text to. Uh, ushers, you can go ahead and uh, come on down. Start moving back through the congregation, the offering. Um, we do have people down here to pray today. Kendon also talked about mountains. I walked in with one this morning. And I'm sure a lot of you did. So if there's one that you are having a particularly difficult time conquering, I would ask you to come down and pray with these people because they have your best interest at heart. So um, that's available to you today if you'd like to pray before you leave. Also remember, uh, tonight is Next Step. That's near and dear to my heart. Please come. If you've been here for five weeks, five years, whatever, and you've not been through it, please come and hear Kendon's heart for this church and uh, find out your spiritual gifting. Uh, don't be afraid of that. It's, it's a wonderful release to know why God created you and what he created you for. Um, find your purpose tonight if you're having trouble finding that. So next week, a great weekend coming up, starting with the young teens or the, the teens and adults, young adults, I'll get that right. For a teen or a young adult, they are having a bonfire next Saturday night, October 26th at five o'clock. Please get on the app. There's some information there and you can register for that. It's moot, mountain moot, I was gonna say moving. Mountain moving Sunday, next Sunday. It's gonna be a special day, lots of food, baptisms, a special speaker, but, but don't come here early, come here. Well, you would come early. <laughs> so just be here at 1030. Don't pay any attention to me. Just listen to that 1030. And uh, it, it's going to be a great day. Hey, I'm glad I came. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. So let's pray before we leave today. Father, um, thank you for Kendon. Thank you for this message that you've laid upon his heart, Lord. Um, we receive it. And Lord, now we just want to go out and live it. We want to be mountain movers. We want to be examples to our family and our friends, Lord. We want them to see you in us. So God, please give us the presence of your Holy Spirit because we know that we can't do it ourselves. We need your help. So as we go throughout this week, Lord, we just pray that we lean upon you and uh, the power of the Holy Spirit that lives inside us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.